Good evening to all, and greetings to all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. First of all, I would like to thank our Almighty God for this beautiful opportunity, and I also would like to thank our Presbyter in Church, committee members, and all the congregation for giving me this beautiful opportunity. So let us look to God in prayer. Loving and living God, we come before you with humble hearts, seeking your guidance and wisdom as we meditate on your word on the topic, Bread of Life. We ask your presence to be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So on this special Youth Sunday, I would like to focus today's passage that we have just heard from Gospel according to St. John chapter 6, verses 25 to 35. So this passage is very important, especially for the youth. John chapter 6, verses 25 to 35 is a key passage that reveals Jesus as the bread of life. And it encourages us to reflect on how Jesus becomes the bread of life and how it impacts our life. So as we explore this passage, we will focus on three key points. So let us look them one by one. The first theme that emerges from this passage is the search for purpose. The search for purpose. We all search. People search for best job in life. People search for good friends. People search for good life partner. We also search for God. And in this passage, as we see that, the crowd, they were searching for Jesus. The story in John chapter 6 begins with a crowd following Jesus after witnessing the miraculous feeding of the 5,000 people. People were attracted to Jesus because of the miracle that he performed. But they did not just follow Jesus because they did not just follow Jesus of the miracle that he performed, but they were following Jesus for their, uh, for their benefits that is fulfill their physical needs, the material benefits, hoping that Jesus would continue to provide their physical needs. So this is similar to what many of us, especially the young people, experience in this world today. They search for meaning. They search for purpose in a world where there is full of distraction and shallow answers. Like the crowd, they often chase to the temporary things, such as popularity. Many of us want attention. So, many of us make reels in YouTube, Instagram, and in Facebook, and they wait for comments and likes. And if we do not receive enough comments and likes, we get disappointed because they search for attention. If they don't get this attention, then they get disappointed. So we want success without any hard work or relationship without any commitment. The crowd wanted to make Jesus as their king because they only saw him someone who could give them their material things and the material power. They did not realize that Jesus is someone who is more than that and Jesus is the source of eternal life. They failed to see that. Similarly, we might try to fill our inner emptiness with things that can truly satisfy us. We may follow the paths that promise happiness, but end up filling with empty and disappointed. Jesus, knowing that the crowd wanted to make him as their king for the wrong reason, he went up to the mountain alone. So this showed that the mission of Jesus is something much more important 
than earthly power. So this means, and it helps us to understand that, the true purpose and identity is that it does not come from the temporary things, but it comes from the deep relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of life. In John chapter 6, verse 25, the crowd keeps searching Jesus and eventually they found him in Capernaum. They ask, Rabbi, how did you get here? And when we look at in John chapter 6, verse 26, Jesus replies saying, They are not seeking him because of the miracles that Jesus he performed, but because they enjoyed the free food that Jesus was providing them. Here, Jesus challenges the crowd and even to us to think why are we seeking him? Why are we searching for God? Are we seeking him just who he is? Or are we seeking him that what he can give us? Today, we all face the same questions as we navigate a world that often focuses on self-interests rather than true faith. So the second theme that emerges from this passage is the true nourishment. The true nourishment. There was an athlete, she was under training for the marathon race. She is determined to win the race. So she was doing hard work and uh, she pushes herself to the limit. But still she is unable to reach the goal. So the, her coach wonders, what is the reason behind it? Coach decided to talk to her, to find the reason. So one day coach called her and started to inquire about her daily routine and her diet. And when it comes to the diet, the girl said that she has been eating the fast food, junk food, like burgers, pizza, and soda. Now, the coach knows what is the reason behind it. It is because of the junk food that she was eating, like pizza, burger, and soft drinks. So the coach told her to take care of her nutrition. You can't perform your best until and unless you stop eating the junk food. So in life, we too sometimes seek quick temporary fixes that, that don't really help us to grow spiritually. Jesus called the bread of life offers true nourishment that supports us spiritually, that strengthens our faith. Just like the athlete needed proper food to keep her fit, to do her best, we also need the spiritual nourishment from Jesus to live healthily and to live faithfully. So like this athlete, we also wonder, though I come every day to church, I take part in every activities of our church, yet I don't grow spiritually. I don't spiritually enrich. So what is the reason behind it? And then we realize that though we participate in the church activities, though I come every day in the church, but I go behind the temporary things of the world. Like the athlete, they went behind the junk food. So as long as we go behind the temporary things of this world, it will never help us to enrich spiritually. It will never help us to grow spiritually. We need to focus on the permanent thing, that permanent thing which nourish us spiritually. In verse 27, Jesus continues in the passage by declaring, Do not work for food that spoils, but work for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. This statement moves focus from physical needs to spiritual ones, urging the crowd to think about the deeper fulfillment that only he can offer. In verse 35, Jesus makes a profound declaration 
I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the first of the seven I am saying statement in the Gospel of John. It's showing a different part of Jesus' divine nature and purpose. The bread of life is a powerful image that connects with our everyday experience just as we need food to stay alive and healthy. Our soul also needs support from the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the bread of life, to truly thrill. Jesus offers himself at this support, promising that anyone who turns to him will never will have their deepest needs fulfilled. Today, for us, this message is very important. In a world where there is full of distraction, like entertainment, social media, and false relationship, Jesus is the true source of life. The bread of life is not just a temporary solution, but a lasting answer that meets the deepest needs of the heart. But how do we receive this nourishment? Jesus says it's true believing in him. The bread of life is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Believing in Jesus means more than that we knowing him. It's fully trusting and obeying on him as the true source of life. When we look at in verses 53 to 54, Jesus takes this metaphor further by saying, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. But whoever eats my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. So this was shocking to his listeners and is still challenging us today. The image of eating his flesh and drinking his blood represents the close and crucial relationship that we need to have with our Lord Jesus Christ. It means fully sharing in his life, death and resurrection, being connected with him in every part of our lives. So for young people, this means going beyond a shell of faith. Simply coming to church, reading the Bible without meditating on the word of God will not help us to grow spiritually, will, will not help us in the spiritual enrichment. We need to have a deeper relationship, we need to have a deeper understanding on the word of God and we need to involve in the life and work of the church through committing ourselves in its service in all the way that we can by offering the God-given talent. We can have a deep personal relationship with Jesus, making him the center of our lives. So the third theme that emerges from this passage is living a life of faith. Living a life of faith. The passage ends with Jesus stressing the importance of believing in him. In verse 57, he says, Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. So Jesus is highlighting that our spiritual life depends on the relationship with him just as his life depends on the relationship with his father. So for the youth, this is a call to commitment. Following Jesus is not one-time choice, but it is a lifelong journey of faith. It means relying on him every day, just like as we rely on the food to stay healthy. This commitment can be tough, especially in a world where often goes against Christian values. 
In verses 60 to 66, many of Jesus' disciples found difficult to accept his teaching and they stopped following Jesus. So this shows that being a true disciple is challenging. Following Jesus is not always easy. Following Jesus is not always convenient. But, uh, but my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, remember that it leads us to eternal life. So for young people, this might be staying faithful even with their peer pressure, societal expectations, or personal doubts. It might require making sacrifice or taking a different path from what the world offers. But Jesus promises that those who trust in him will find life through him. Finally, Jesus offers the hope of eternal life to those who believe in him. In verse 40, he says, For my Father will is that whoever, everyone who looks to the Son of Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. This promise gives hope and assurance as we navigate the challenges of life. For young people, the hope of eternal lives helps us to see beyond the temporary struggles and uncertainties of this world. It assures us that our future is secure in Christ. And no matter what challenges that we may face, we can look forward to our future full of God's presence and full of God's help. So as we reflect on this passage gospel, from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 6, we are reminded to the profound truth that Jesus is the bread of life. For the youth, this message is particularly relevant as they navigate the challenges of identity, purpose, and faith in a world that often leads them astray. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this evening we have learned three themes. Firstly, the search for purpose. The search for purpose call us to recognize the true fulfillment that is found not in the temporary things of this world, but in the deeper relationship with Jesus. And secondly, the true nourishment. The true nourishment challenges us to look beyond superficial solutions and to find our deepest needs met in Jesus. Thirdly, living a life of faith. Living a life of faith invites us to commit ourselves fully to Jesus, trusting in his promise of eternal life. So on this Youth Sunday, let us encourage our young people to seek Jesus with all their hearts, to find their identity and purpose in him, and to live lives that fully committed to following him. In doing so, they will discover the true and lasting satisfaction that comes from the bread of life. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the truth and we ask you that you seal the message in our hearts and the hearts of those who heard it. May the truth of Jesus as a sustainer and source of eternal life take root in our lives and transform us. Help us to continually seek you and to find our spiritual nourishment in you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.